Ryan and Dan Streich. I'm one of the shareholders uh, at PA Norhoven, along with Jim and Jeff Leishman, and president of the company for the last 41 years. I'm in Taiwan, Taiwan, Taiwan right now at our Tashing factory, our longtime partner for the last 40 plus years. I'm on board Nordhaven 68, number 35. And most Nordhaven infection autos or followers of, of the company or Dreamer site are already aware of this boat. Um, this is uh, a boat that was uh, ordered uh, by a, a couple, Brad and Cheryl, uh, who had actually a younger couple, but who had reached a point in life where the business was being sold, uh, their, their daughter was going off to college, and they were going to start their new life uh, on, on their dream, Norhaven. And they put a lot, a lot of effort into, into the special ordering of this boat. It's a gorgeous, absolutely stunning boat. Tragically, last June, uh, Brad was, uh, or last May, uh, Brad was killed uh, in a in a, uh, an airplane crash, in a light plane crash, and of course it changed the course of history at that point. We worked with Cheryl and decided to, to keep building the boat, build the boat out. Uh, it was a dream for both of them, and we have finished it now, and all of, the, all of their work and effort and, and thought and so forth uh, that went into this boat is, is now uh, showing itself. So uh, it's it, it's being offered for sale now, so on, on our website, you'll see it on the North Hollywood site. But it, it hasn't been very well presented yet, we've been working on the boat, and in the process of working on the boats, when certain areas are finished, they get covered and they're, there's uh, cardboard, and you know, we don't really actually see the, the complete boat. Uh, knowing, uh, I'm over here for several reasons, one is to attend the, uh, the annual Tushing uh, Chinese New Year party, which is, is tonight, uh, by the way, really, really fun event. And this this particular boat is very, very important to me. So while I'm here, uh, and with the boat now being finished, we were able to completely uncover it and present it, uh, basically for the first time in this video, present it to the world as a, as a finished boat. So follow with me. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make a walkthrough video of the boat. It's, I, I, I probably won't cover everything. The, uh, I reviewed the the original order on this boat and the change order on this boat, uh, change order spreadsheet, and there were over 300 items, notes and, and changes and, and clarifications and so forth and that that are part of the building of this boat. It is a spectacular boat, and you'll you'll see it as you walk through here uh, momentarily. Uh, it's spectacular in terms of the the fit and finish, the pretty brave decision, frankly, to go with the with the uh, stained mahogany wood and the white uh, painted satin finished uh, uh, b-board vertical staving and, and overhead staving and when when this boat is finished out with the carpets and the furniture and the uh, bed coverings and pillows and the, the colors and accessories it will be i i think it will end up being in the, in the top five norhouse of, of all time I'm, I'm, extremely impressed with this boat and we 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 all look forward to seeing it come alive with you know with the next owner and uh, hope that this if if you're interested in this boat we, we hope that this video will will help you understand it better again i need to have a dis disclaimer that this this you know we're going to take at best maybe 20 minutes uh, to make this video and it will require hours and hours of meetings to to go over all the fine details and the, the drawings and the background and the choices and so forth that were made on it. So this is uh, this is just a wet your appetite or just give you a quick education on this particular boat. The uh, if, if you have further interest, um, you can see more of on on Nordhaven.com or or call your Nordhaven salesman and and, uh, and get more information. So join me for a walk through the boat. We're I'm excited to show it to you. I just love this beautiful boat. So ladies and gentlemen, we'll start off here in, in the galley. This is beautiful, beautiful uh, marble countertops, uh, melee appliances, the cooktop uh, and oven and uh, microwave. I'm not gonna go into specifics of model numbers uh, and so forth in this video, partly because I don't know them. Uh, and partly, uh, if someone has a more specific interest in this boat, we, we do have all of that quite a bit on the website and, and um, better than that, you, you make contact with a Norhaven salesperson who 
uh, we would start uh, feeding you the specific uh, information. This boat, we're going to pan around now and um, well, actually, let's, let's take a look at this refrigerator first. This, this is just an example. Uh, this Sub Zero refrigerator is finished in this beautiful, beautiful mahogany with uh, the, the beautiful hardware, uh, the trim. It's perfect. I'm looking at it. I don't know if it comes through in the film, but it is perfect. The every corner, the the gleam of the semi gloss varnish. It's. It, I don't have words to describe it. Now we're going to pan around uh, and look at the salon. And well, first let's take a look at this table, which again is perfect. It, I, you may not be able to see it. I took a photo yesterday, and there's so much there's so much reflection on it. It's like a mirror. But that that, ladies and gentlemen, is varnished mahogany. And Dashing uses a process where it is it's sprayed varnish, but it is then color sanded and buffed to get this this final finish on it. And it's so shiny you can't even look at it. Like I'm looking at it now, I can't quite see it. It's too shiny. But it is just this table is a work of art. Uh, the layout on this boat was uh, custom done by, by Brad and Cheryl, and it is uh, like we do on some of the bigger boats and what is common on super yachts uh, is that the furniture it, it will have furniture in it. Right now it is uh, without without built-in furniture so we will the the eventual buyer of this boat will choose the furniture and the decor of it and so forth to uh to finish out the salon we'll have chairs on this side of the, of the table and this is, is fixed uh, bench seating uh, right here and again as you pan around and look at the overhead uh, you'll see the uh, the lovely uh center cross b-board the white with with that beautiful uh, mahogany finish. And I want to point out uh, while we're looking at it, uh, that uh, door. It's a it's uh, these these doors are uh, these are made in fact by Pashing and these are fiberglass. They made up molds for them. So this is all molded fiberglass. Um, over the years they, we we use we use a lot of aluminum doors which uh, you end up battling uh, corrosion and, and need for paint and so forth. So these are just our glossy gel coat uh, fiberglass with, of course, the, the dogs as, as we have on, on all the exterior doors and the full glass uh, insert for, for light and uh, visibility. Beautiful, beautiful. And the, the side windows are, are typical uh, Norcott in there. Uh, 12 millimeter, uh, half inch glass, tempered glass, uh, bulletproof. I don't know, I can't recall ever losing a window in Nordhaven. But furthermore, we'll look at it when we do the exterior of the boat. There's, there are lugs on there for storm plates if someone chooses to put those on uh, later for some really ultra type offshore work. But I personally don't think you need it. Uh, this also, as we can see right here, is a wide body boat. So, the, there will be on other versions of the 60. You can have a, a walkway on, on this uh, port side, but on the wide body boat, uh, which we many more of our wide bodies, is pushed out about 20 inches, and that's how we get this this gigantic, uh, basically skating ring uh, salon here. And while we're just going and on over beautiful things, this floor is is artwork to hold this, this uh, teak. Uh, soul here. Uh, this is just, it's just magnificent to look at. It, it is teak and the, the Nordhaven boats, when you see a teak or we, we use uh, cherry and, and other woods sometimes, but that, that's a solid wood. It's uh, about a quarter inch thick uh, teak planks that are laid down one by one uh, with the stained dark wood in between. And when this is finished out with furniture and the right Carpeting and, and so forth, it will be it'll be beyond description of, of beautiful. So this is this is quite an expansive of teak that we're looking at here. Over in this corner, we've got a TV set on a lift that will you can see the little outline here of the of the top. So with the push of a button, that will uh, come up. See it hiding down there. Okay, from here we will walk 
forward into the owner statement. Actually, before we get there, there's a little day head right, right here. So you got your technical toilet off the left, little, little sink and uh, so forth there. In a moment, we'll we'll go down these stairs into the lower stateroom. For for the moment, we're just coming down these four steps right here and stepping into the owner's stateroom. You'll see the the same uh, mahogany and uh, beadboard uh, decor again uh, here. Uh, your king size bed, which is is uh, standard on the sixty eight. Beautiful. Headboard design uh, that came out, came out lovely. This the the sole in here is plywood at the moment, so this will be a carpeted room when, when the uh, commissioning is uh, complete. Lovely desk here. This has the vertical windows. These these came later in the life of of the of the North Haven 68 project. Um, they're they're just wonderful. They bring in a lot of light. Um, we give a, a nice, nice look to the room. Uh, your your typical hatches that we use with the privacy one direction, uh, plug screen the other direction. Cedar lined hanging lockers, his and hers on each side. A lot of uh, one of the nice things about you know, there's like thousand nice things about this boat, but one of them on a, on a half pilot house boat like this is that the owner's stateroom is above us is the foredeck of the boat, and so you've got natural hatches. You've got three hatches um, that open up into the stateroom, so they can be they can be opened up for natural ventilation and, and light. Coming in is the owner's head. Lovely fixtures chosen by the owners. Marble countertops, same same fit and finish. Big shower with marble seat in there, and the toilet up up forward for privacy. Also, one of the things that uh, that people may not know about uh, modern Nordhavens is is how the doors are, are built. Um, this this door and, and every door um, is is fitted with a, a gasket. You can't see here, we'll get a different shot, but when you shut the door, it's like shutting the door to the finest Mercedes. They, there's no rattling. Um, it's sealed off from from noise or, or other disturbance, but they it's just you just want to like shut it a couple of times just to enjoy the feel of it. It has a lovely it's, it is superb. Let's turn and we can actually point out the gasket uh, right here. Here is the, the gasket that's in, in all these interior doors. And the door itself, I mean, if I took this thing up, it probably weighs 50 pounds. It's a monster of solid, beautiful mahogany and the, the inlay panels. Better than a Mercedes. Actually, I wish my Mercedes was that good. I had a Mercedes. Okay, follow me now. down into the uh, guest stateroom area of the uh, 68. There's, when we turn around and start walking aft, we walk down a hallway, but going forward, we've got the laundry facilities here with the uh, washer and dryer. These doors are nifty, they, they push all the way back in here and, and lock. So when you're doing your, your laundry, uh, you can just keep those doors uh, open that way. Uh, nice little Bump probably for kids or or uh, overflow guests uh, can go in here. Teak and holy soul, teak and blackwood soul.
this and this is a very very nice stateroom here. The uh, uh, you know large double berth uh, and in suite head, which will come in and film here in a moment. Uh, with of course uh, shower also. So I actually stayed in this stateroom uh, when uh, when I was uh, cruising uh, and a guest um, aboard uh, Peter Bison's boat and. Got just like a like a king in here. It's big bed, in suite, had plenty of storage. Lights go on automatically, sear lined. Storage underneath. These windows here, which are pretty pretty close to the water line. Uh, the glass in those, we, we normally use half inch glass uh, in the salon windows and else, elsewhere around the boat. These are three quarter inch glass, tempered glass. They're bonded in from the outside. Uh, they're super strong, never, never have to worry about those. And just looking up at your, at your typical uh, balances for uh, the air conditioning, which are nicely done, nicely finished, integrated with the boat. I'm back out in the hallway now, and we're going further to the back and to another stateroom. Double berth, in suite head and shower. So you've got you've got two beautiful staterooms, double staterooms here that uh, you don't have to you don't have to whisper a word of apology when your guests come aboard this boat. They will they'll be living like like royalty. Now, further aft, going into this hallway, we go through this water door, which is like a, like a ball door. I mean, it is a ball door. It's watertight. It's it's a heavy duty door with with doors on it that takes down the shutter. The engine itself is a, is a watertight uh, compartment. We're going to come back to that. I think that's a that's a whole that is a whole. I should have its own. I should have its own zip code. That is a quite a place back there. There's so much going on. So I don't want to just do it a little bit right now. I want to finish the pilot house and come back to it. Actually, while we're, while we're here, uh, let's take a, the, take a look at the electrical panel. Uh, the, well, I'm just talking in superlative because that's all that applies to this boat. And if we can open this. These are locked here. I think we'll come back to this in a minute and and uh, open this and take a look behind it. It's a work of art. The doshing wiring, all ten wiring, of course, AYC um, approved uh, our engineers. On the PA side, Mike Tolaria, the project managers, the uh, FATA, the engineer on this side, they are artists when it comes to the, the wiring and uh, engineering work on these panels. And we've they have evolved over the years too. We've now got the backlit uh, labels on them. So these are the product of 30 years of evolution, and they are they're off the chart. They, they, we're we're going to open this up a little bit later, and uh, the the techies that are watching this will they'll, they'll pause and 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 want to look at it more. Okay, now we're going to walk up to the pilot house. Okay, everywhere I look on this boat, I see stuff. Look at this, look at this rail. Um, I find when you come up here, get a, get a shot of this rail. I mean, just this rail alone. If anybody's ever worked in wood, this is a mahogany, a piece of mahogany that is, has compound curves to it. It's perfectly finished, has perfect hardware, and you'll notice the, the attachment points are bent down so they don't hit your fingers when you drag your fingers along. On it. It is it's one of a million things on this boat that Hardy has talked about, but it is it is gorgeous. Everywhere I look, perfect underneath. I haven't even looked, but I swear I guarantee if I went underneath that table and looked at it, it would be perfect.
Okay, we're up in the pilot house now. The the helm charts are not in here yet. Uh, we, we usually we don't usually ship those over the pack. We we install those. They're pretty easy to install uh, during commissioning at the commissioning location. This boat sitting here, still in Taiwan, it's it's within our ability to ship it anywhere. It, it it's a sixty cycle boat, so it probably will go to the east or uh, east coast or uh, west coast of America or, or Canada. Uh, but maybe not. I'll explain some things later in the electrical system that uh, illustrate that this, this book could go to Europe and be happy, or Australia. Uh, but in, in any case, the helm chairs will be installed later, but imagine two helm chairs uh, here. I'm not going to go into the specifics of the electronics package. It's actually on our website, uh, a very uh, comprehensive list. It's it's a lot of lot of good stuff, and it would be call up on these three flat screens. Uh, not to mention autopilots, cameras, uh, communication, TV, radios, uh, the works. So again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to. Frankly, I don't even know. But I'm not gonna try to explain that to you right now. Uh, if you if you do have a deeper interest in the boat. The, uh, it is on, on the Norcommon site. Uh, engine controls, wing and main, uh, these are typical factory uh, supplied items. These aren't really part of the electrical system, but monitoring for uh, blowers and pumps uh, that are on and uh, indicator panel of which pump is running uh, when. So if you have a like an automatic bilge pump coming on, and you can see it here, um, if a pump should run away somehow, you can, you can see it there. This is an interesting feature that we've gone to in recent years where we've uh, eliminated the, the center mullion on the, the window facing forward. So I'm standing here looking out, it's a magnificent uh, view. Uh, in previous years, there, you'd be kind of staring into a, into a mullion, but uh, not now. Uh, same, same teak and blackwood sole. Tables, this table. This table slides out, so sometimes people just will take this out. Oh my gosh, that is that is so perfect. This this boat is so perfect. And okay, I'm going to do a test. I have not done this before. I'm going to pull this table out, and I'm going to show you before I even look at it myself. A little bit dirty, but perfect. Perfect. That's what you get for these boats. Shocking. Unbelievable, but you might you might oh, I was kidding. Uh, you might want to uh, just leave that table out, leave a leaf out, I should say, or not. So there's an interesting feature of this boat, which we'll see in the engine room. We'll see on the exterior. Uh, views. It, it's a dry exhaust boat, but we have routed the exhaust off to the starboard side. So you'll see it asymmetrical uh, from the outside of the boat, but it has uh, allowed us to get uh, to free up some real estate here where, where the stack would normally come up and give us the, the lovely stateroom. It's a little single burst stateroom here. I mean, you'd be you'd be happy as a clam in this room. Beautiful, nice little bunk here, window storage, nice cedar lined. All these all these hanging lockers are cedar lined. Nice snow coming out there. The exhaust is coming up in that kind of that dead zone right there, and then you've got a uh, head and shower here. So this this can actually be uh, a standalone stateroom for uh, guests or uh, captain, if you have a captain on board, or just a day head uh, for for normal normal cruising on the boat. Just take one. So this uh, pretty much concludes the the interior of the boat. Uh, we will dive into the engine room now and enjoy that. That is, there's a, I, I, there's a lot of goodies in there, so follow me.
uh, let's start off with the uh, with the beast here. This is a, a single engine boat, dry exhaust, uh, as I mentioned, keel cooled, the classic configuration that the majority of Nordhavns have uh, have seen you know, over the over the last 30 years. This this configuration has crossed many oceans, circumnavigated the world, run thousands of hours. Some of some of the older Nordhavns are running up in the eight or nine or ten thousand hour uh, uh, usage numbers. So this beast here will it'll outlast us all. Typical to to Nordhavns and what what uh, Cascade we get these engines from Cascade and, and they they do a lot of special stuff for us, including these big alternators, which which I don't know their amperage there. I think they're around two hundred amps each. And they're they're run off of uh, a notched uh, serpentine belt, so you get good grab on there, and these can really crank out some uh, some amps. The we're going to get to later some of the concept of the electrical system. It, we've got big inverters uh, on board the boat. We've got 10 kW of inverting, so they're depending on the operator and the conditions and and so forth. You can you can live off of the alternator output through the inverters for for much of what goes on uh, on the boat. So um, these dump into the 12 8D house batteries and, and then split off to the uh, separate engine start batteries separate for, for this, for the wing engine and for the generators. The, uh, you've, got, uh, you've got three tanks on the boat uh, totaling 30, 100 gallons, I believe. Uh, we've we've got the sight gauges on here. This is a, a Nordhaven feature. Again, it's been around for for years. It's it's evolved over time. Uh, this is this is kind of a a nifty feature here. It's a uh, we first started having to do that for the CE boats in in Europe, but it uh, it's an automatic shut off. Uh, there was. The CE folks thought they were worried that if there was a, a fire, the thing could burn up and you'd have fuel spilling out. So uh, this is is normally always closed. So when you want to check your fuel levels, you, you just this is is momentary. You just open that up and see see what you what you get on there. You got your nice uh, got your nice workbench here. This this will get a a real sweet tool chest that'll go in uh, during commissioning. But your your happy place is here puttering. You're puttering on your boat, and you've got uh, your beautiful sink, vice, lighting. Um, you can check your tanks uh, from here. You can you can start and stop your engine from here. It you wouldn't particularly run the boat from here, but if you came down and you saw smoke or you were you know something alarmed you, you could you could turn the engine off right here. Most likely, you if you were servicing the engine or changing oil or for one particular over one reason or another. Um, you would use these controls uh, for that, so you wouldn't have to be running up and down uh, upstairs. Um, God, they do a nice pipe work here. This is all your uh, coolant water here, custom, custom stainless steel piping, polished, and that leads out to the um, keel cooler. These color goes engine bed, and that's a. I know it's this a, a real heavy stainless steel cap uh, right here. But I know what's under it, and it's a monster, uh, big timber uh, gizmo that that uh, is shaped and and bonded into the boat, glassed over heavily, and then you know tied in over a, a long, uh, a long attachment point on the hull, and then capped with this uh, stainless steel. So it's it is uh, that engine is is not going anywhere. Well, as long as we're here, uh, we're looking at the wing engine, which is, I believe, 160 horsepower, also John Deere. It's on a V drive, which is very common with, uh, you know, with wing engines on Nordhavens, and it allows us to get the engine further back and kind of tucked in the corner. Later, we'll go on the exterior of the boat and and see the propeller and shaft and so forth as it comes out. It has its own its own propeller. It's a a, uh, a folding. Uh, uh, a folding propeller so it folds out of the way when, you, when you're underway to reduce the drag and then if you need it for propulsion it, it swings out centrifugally and um, off you go. 
very seldom needed for propulsion, almost never needed for propulsion, but it, this engine also, on the other end of it, we'll see it, there's a hydraulic pump on it, big, big whopper of a pump, and for the hydraulic system, that is your principal power for it, although I'm going to show you two other pumps also, but that's, that's the big, big bomb in there that um, will run your, your thrusters, actually it'll run all the hydraulics, but primarily it's used for the thrusters, which are X horsepower, I can't remember, I, th I think, I think 37 horsepower, um, but beautiful, beautiful hydraulic thrusters that uh, will run essentially indefinitely, and the controls for them are in five locations. They're, um, uh, they're proportional controls, so you can throttle them to to affect the power. Uh, you can, you know, we oftentimes for the, hear from the Florida folks that they're waiting for a bridge to open. They may wait 30 minutes or so, and there's current, and there's other boats, and they're, they're stressed out. But with, the, with those thrusters, you can just, as long as you need to, you can keep the boat in position or spin it or, or uh, you know, make it go sideways, um, do whatever you want. So over the years, these hydraulic thrusters and the wing engine powering them has has become a beloved uh, feature uh, of Nordhavn's, and just like everything else in this age of um, maturity of all of us, um, uh, with uh, PA Nordhavn, Tashing, all the owner feedback, these hydraulic systems are fully and beautifully developed with how the the plumbing is configured, the design work, the uh, algorithms of the control systems, uh, the logic of how it's all laid out, and when you look around here, I mean, this is a boat that is, has, has been, been hot a couple times, and there's not a leak, there's not a moist spot, it's bone dry and dusty. That's, that's what you get uh, with these modern boats. Uh, additionally, on the fuel system, which we're going to, I see the camera pointing over there, we'll get to that now. Now, there, there, ladies and gentlemen, is quite a piece of work. Um, that is the that is your sort of classic modern Nordhaven uh, day tank, running tank, uh, what, whatever you whatever you want to call it. It was actually very well described in that recent uh, video on the Nordhaven 60. But the the main tanks drain into it. The uh, you we draw from it uh, at the bottom. You can see the the supply uh, zones there, the valves. Uh, but below that, there's actually a, uh, a sump uh, that would catch any debris or water or, or, or whatever, and an indicator up in the pilot house that indicates if you do have that uh, problem. And you can, you can drain that off, I mean, just like a, like a high-wing airplane. You see the folks do sometimes, you'd get a little cup down there and drain off the, the nasty stuff, and if there's no nasty stuff, then you know, you're, you're in business. It also has a, a sight gauge on it. Uh, we have a, a transfer system. I probably shouldn't spend too much time on that because all these drawings are, are in the package and we, if you haven't seen them, we can supply them to you. But the Nordhaven fuel systems are really fun, really, really fun and very well evolved. But we can, with this transfer pump, norm, there, there's many ways to run the fuel system. Typically, it's done in a very simple way with gravity, um, but you can force the fuel around also with the transfer pumps. Um, you you are polishing and filtering the, the fuel when, when you transfer it, or you can supply from and return to the same tank and simply polish it and clean it in the filters. So the, we, we do see on some of the bigger boats the centrifugal uh, uh, fuel polishing systems, uh, but many, many, many people don't have those systems and, and, and cruise happily with this particular package. Uh, I love it. I mean, I, this is how I do it on my own boat. I wish this was my own boat. And again, everywhere you look, uh, these fittings are tidy and clean and dry. All that hose, by the way, is Aeroquip. I believe 234 is the model number of it, but that's all fire resistant approved hose. Uh, it it uh, satisfies the Europeans for the CE boats, which, which this uh, isn't. Uh, while we're pointed in the general direction, the uh, this boat has uh, the star system on it, the stabilizing at rest uh, s system. 
uh, zero speed, some people call it. And so when you, and, and when we go to the outside of the boat, I'll show you the fin, which has a little bit of a different shape than, than the typical Nordhoven shaped fin. So uh, should you choose to use it at anchor or even, even in open ocean, if you stop, you know, catch a fish or whatever. And one of the things that, that uh, any boat does, you're, you know, you're all happy, you're stabilized moving along in open ocean and you, you stop whatever to, to, let's say, land a fish or look at something interesting. Uh, if it's an open ocean situation, you know, the boat may well be rolling at that point and uh, this uh, star system, you kick that in and it will, uh, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it just, it just straightens the boat up. So this hydraulic pump on the generator generates the hydraulic power needed to, to operate that star system. The, uh, the main engine, you know, may well be off or at idle at that point and it, it wouldn't have enough, enough oomph to, to run the, the star system. So that's a, a lovely extra feature on this boat. It's one of the many, many uh, extras uh, that make this boat so special and, and so uh, so valuable. So let's keep walking aft here. Yeah, there's, uh, this has uh, oversized blowers. There's always, we, we have things we call religious subjects where people get all, all worked up on opinions of there's probably about 10 subjects they're really fun <laughs> we, we i enjoy it when the dreamer side or a conversation starts arguing we're discussing these things and there's kind of no right or wrong i mean those who are passionate would probably say there's a wrong but it it in the bigger picture it illustrates just how wonderful it is to love these boats uh you you love them enough to care about this stuff so uh engine room ventilation is a is a religious subject. It gets talked about uh, endlessly. There are uh, opinions, but there won't be any opinions of this boat. This has oversized blowers on it, uh, and those those louvers on there. Uh, um, if this fire bo bottle goes off, yeah. So if this fire bottle goes off, either by the heat sensor on it uh, or by manually pulling it, there's a exterior manual pull on it, then. It, there's a little wire, a little relay on, on this side. You can't see it where the camera's pointed. But that goes to a relay box, and all these tags will come off later. That's just stuff we always leave that on there until, you know, until final commissioning, just in case there's a notice or a whatever, a label on a pillow or something. Uh, but once that fire bottle goes off, then those that little you know, switch there leads to a relay box, and a, like a lot of things happen at that point. Among them is it kills the engines, uh, it shuts off the blowers and closes those louvers on there so it uh, contains the fire in, inside the engine room and it douses it with, with the chemical. So again, this is a very, very well developed uh, uh, installation and system that has been looked at, approved, and insurance people and surveyors and every, everybody has, has played, a, played a part in, in the the evolution of it to get to, to this point. Yeah, this is your main uh, generator right here, Northern Lights 27 KW, I believe. Your torrid water heater. I think this baby's 50 gallons. Yes. And there is actually, God, there's so many things about this boat. Every time I look around, I see another thing. I'm seeing this right here, and I, until now, I didn't actually put two of them together, but I know what this is. Later, when we get to the Lazarette, we're going to see uh, the diesel-fired boiler heating system. And um, apparently, we're drawing off of that heating system and uh, and running it through this water heater to assist the, the normal electric um, uh, heating on here, so there. Probably getting ahead of myself, but there is there. There are people who who uh, configure their boat and enjoy setting their boat up so that it can it can run through the night without an inverter, without a generator going. And it, you, a lot of times you see it up in the Pacific Northwest, or you, you see it in places where air conditioning isn't required. So 
this particular boat with the uh, on a chilly Pacific Northwest uh, evening, you, uh, you there's 12 AD batteries uh, in the boat for the house, and with the 10 kW uh, 10, 10, 10 kW of inverter, um, you can run your appliances, your TV, your what have you. Uh, if heating is required electrically, whether it be through the reverse cycle of the chiller of the uh, compressors, which we're going to see in a moment, or from the inductive heating, which we also have. That's a that takes a takes a lot of juice. So in that case, you would go over to this diesel-fired heating system, kick that on. The pumps and blowers and so forth are are either either low draw AC, which would come out of the inverter, or or DC. And so the boat can can live through the night, uh, heated lights, appliances, uh, and so forth off off the batteries. And as a sidebar to to the benefit of that uh, boiler is that you pull some of that hot water and run it through a heat exchanger in your in your water heater here and uh, and get hot water. Actually, I found there's a, a good view of the of the mechanism that that drives the uh, that that louver there for shutting off the uh, the blowers. Also, a good view of of through holes labels, access, and then that's your, uh, that's your hydraulic tank for the hydraulic system there just to the left. Okay, well we're going to, uh, yeah, we ain't finished. In fact, we're actually getting into the into the fun zone here through this next door. This is the aft end of the engine room through another watertight, uh, beautiful vault door into the lazarette. So off we go. Should have worn knee pants. There are so many things in this boat. I actually didn't. I when I reviewed it this morning, I didn't even see this one. That's a dive compressor over there. Jeez, there's a lot of stuff on this boat. So, okay, so we've got a dive compressor there. Uh, we've got our our chargers here. So uh, we, we've got two of these, and I believe they're 100 amps each. And these Victron chargers are pretty pretty nifty, pretty smart, and they will take uh, either. Uh, uh, 50 cycle or 60 cycle input and so if you're if you, this is basically a 60 cycle boat but if you're over in Europe with this boat you can you can plug these in charge your batteries live off of your inverters and additionally it's it's behind iPhone now we're going to get it in a minute the air conditioning has uh, VFD drives on it which uh, can uh, except 50 or 60 cycles, it's 240 volts, but you could run those in Europe off of 50 cycle European power. So certainly for an American or a 60 cycle person cruising in Europe could get by very nicely by understanding, and we, we help, there's pages and pages of drawings and, and so forth, uh, understanding the systems but, and how you plug it in and, and make it work. But this boat can be very alive and very happy uh, in a, in a uh, a 50 cycle uh, environment. So right behind here, not visible in the camera, are the 12 batteries. Uh, another uh, uh, fire bottle here that'll pop off if you know, bad things happen. The uh, the funny looking snake thing back there is the guide for the blend in cords. So you've got two cords for the boat. They're power driven, so you don't have to manhandle it because they're 50 amp cords, just big old monsters that are, you'd basically be breathing hard if you had to roll that thing up by hand. So you press a button, it, it pulls it in or pushes it out, and it coils into a, into a bucket there. Normally you wouldn't need both cords. 
Um, but there are many, and I won't go into them now, uh, but it's a Mike Tularia conversation. There are many different configurations of how you can plug the boat in, in different voltages, um, how the panel uh, is configured to which cord you pull off of, blending the cords, uh, what have you. So again, not going to go into it now, but it's the product of 30 years of evolution and it, it is gorgeous. Um, I can see the emergency tiller back there. You can't see it. That's just the, the nose of it there. There's a um, just that little hole right there leads up through the cockpit. We're, we're below the cockpit right now and the emergency tiller would drop down and sit on that uh, square rudder stock that, that you see. Um, the the two arms sticking out there, the rudder feedback units for the for the autopilot, all done, all installed. And we've got two two gorgeous water makers here. I'm not quite sure of their capacity. Yeah, so they well actually they run off of 50 or 60 hertz also. God, they're either, well of course if you're plugged in you don't need a water maker, but um, their capacity there. Yeah, it looks like they're well, they're nice. We'll, we'll, we have all that information. Again, I'm skipping over a lot of things here. If, if you ha have specific interest in this boat, uh, carve out a day. Um, and there's spreadsheets, drawings, uh, information uh, galore uh, that probably things I don't even, I guarantee you things I don't even know about the boat. So, this is your second generator over here. That is 21 kW, no, no, 16, 16 kW. So, that a little sweet, little sweet generator. Probably anytime you're not running air conditioning, you, you'd run that. I just, I just found something else I didn't, didn't remember seeing on the list. This has the spot zero uh, washdown system on it, which, which is part of the, uh, the water maker system. Um, yes, yeah. and it can uh, fit, uh, fit from the dock. Oh, from the from the dock. Yeah. Okay. So does this uh, both way? So don't don't get nervous that the Norwegian president doesn't have this stuff. So now does this does this use the water maker compressors? Yes. Okay. So you take dock water, which is which is essentially pretty pretty not salt water. Yeah. And uh, easier to to run through the membranes. Yes. You run it through the spot zero. You then have essentially sort of deionized water mm -hmm. for washing the boat. Yep. So um, then, uh, if you're if you're an old guy like me who can't climb all around the boat uh, to wash it, you spray it down uh, with this and um, with, with this deionized water. It's kind of we're deionized. It's spot zero water. It's kind of what you see them do on uh, car lots and so forth when they're moving car to car and hosing them off so it doesn't leave a, a water spot. So, uh, again, this boat, this boat is so full of surprises. Okay, this is this is this is beautiful stuff. You you just want to be here. You just want to. Uh, big big rams for steering. Um, this base that these rams bolt onto. Uh, I've seen them build the boat, and <laughs> this is a. This, you could probably lift the whole boat by, you know, by this structure right here. Um, and there's a, a metal cap uh, underneath that that's glassed over. So these are machine screws that, that bolt that down on there. Two autopilot pumps. And then this is your, this is your stern thruster here. Uh, it's a kind of a thing that Nordhaven, I don't know if we invented it or something. I haven't seen it in other boats, but um, where we angle the stern uh, thrust. And uh, so we don't have to mount it on the back of the boat. Sometimes you see... I've seen some of the folks mount something on the back of the boat. It's a Mickey Mouse. It, it's you know they're just hackers would do that. This this is the right way to do it. And this is your little uh, you know, your, your little uh, uh, heater, your diesel fired uh, boiler, and so it circulates uh, it, it circulates the hot water through a, a whole plumbing system throughout the boat to. Actually, here's a, little, here's a little air handler right here. So, so these are located in various places around the boat. It's probably out of 
10 or 12 of them or whatever. But the, uh, it's essentially just like a heater in your car. So it's got a little radiator in there, hot water goes in and, and uh, it, it blows the hot air out. So this is a sweet, this is a pricey, pricey thing. You'd, you'd be shocked what these babies cost. Uh, and it in, involves, you know, I mean, you've got to supply fuel to it. You, you've, got to, you've got to vent the, the hot exhaust. You've got to run this stuff all through the boat. You've got to woodwork around these, these uh, air handlers. And uh, being installed in the boat like this um, at the factory, it's all blended in with the, with the factory woodwork. And somebody, someday, up in Scandinavia or, or Pacific Northwest or up in Maine or whatever, is going to be is going to be loving this uh, this machine. The Florida folks probably don't need it, but it, it will it'll earn its keep uh, someday. I've been on boats that have these running, and it's just it's just lovely. So here's your your air conditioning. Uh, again, this is uh, the you know the latest uh, from uh, from Dometic. Uh, the uh, the VFDs are a, a really nice feature on, on lowering the, the power requirements and being able to put 50 or 60 cycle into the into the units. Now these things are laying around. This, this looks a little little trashy, but uh, the, the Doshing just puts all the stuff here, so you know, in case there's some weird fire or something like that, we're, we can save the boat. I think that's about it for the last red. Yeah, so Actually, I was just getting ready to take us out of the lazarette, but uh, miss this nice feature here, the oil transfer uh, system, or oil pumping system. So this, uh, the, so we've got the main engine, the wing engine, and the generators uh, to uh, pull oil out of, or pump oil back into uh, each of those units, so you don't have to get underneath them and and you can't even hardly get underneath of them to train oil out. This is all done very in a very sanitary way. Uh, this one is set up where you would use uh, five-gallon pails and uh, dip that hose into them. So yeah, oil change pump. Oh, there's one of the cameras too. Uh, yeah, I have I haven't gone into the specifics of the electronics package. Uh, and uh, like I said up in the pilot house, uh, just go on Nordhaven.com on in the in the uh, brokerage section, this boat is, is listed there, and the electronic specs, the PDF of that is uh, is there. And it's a long, it's a long list. So we were just getting ready to crawl out of here, and the iPhone reminded me, and again, there's so many surprises on this boat uh, that there's another, another thing. If you look at this right here, that is a, a little uh, sensor. And so the, the two engine room doors and all the exterior doors have these sensors on them that indicate if the, if the door's open and it reads out up in the pilot house. So uh, if you're oh, if you're cruising along and, and you really shouldn't have this door open, uh, you know, maybe somebody goes in and, and forgets to close it, uh, it's, it's really good to keep, keep this door closed if you don't need it open. So uh, it, you can tell while up in the pilot house if this boat, if this door is ajar or open, and, and frankly, the all, all of the uh, all of the other exterior doors are fitted with it also. So, again, another really nice pe feature. I don't know what it costs, but ain't cheap. It's here. It's part of the boat. Ladies and gentlemen, I uh, I said that we were going to come back to the electrical panels. These actually are locked, so it, it requires a special tool to get them open, so you don't people aren't horsing around in there or kids or or, or whatever. So we've got them unlocked now, and. Behold, magnificence. This is beyond words of precision, loveliness, color, color coding all to ABS or ABYC uh, standards, um, relays of, of, actually, this stuff's so beyond me now, but it's not beyond our engineers, Mike Calaria and the guys that built it. They're a typical uh, a typical new Nordhaven now has uh, about 75 pages of electrical drawings and the the function and installation and uh, completion of of the design concept is just perfect. It is just gorgeous.
you know, this is this is all AC stuff right here. So um, there's a, a cover that stays. This is DC low voltage, so you know, it won't, won't hurt you. Um, but this is all covered right here because it's high voltage. So even when the doors are open, you'd have to work at it to shock yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, we're uh, on the outside of the boat now, and sometimes these video reports of the boat don't don't have this opportunity to see the boat out of the water. So I'm going to take advantage of that right now and walk around uh, and, and show you a, a few of the, uh, the the nice features uh, that we don't normally get to see. Uh, I'm going to start off with, a, with an odd one that you may uh, you may not even think about, but this this illustrates the the wisdom and the experience that comes with years. When you look at that rub rail there along the side of the boat and at the at the back, the extended swim step, uh, you'll see a radius on the bottom. Now, why is that radius there? Well, a, a square rub rail, which frankly we had many, many years ago and, and competitors still have, will uh, will cause a, a little, little wave that will cause a, a slapping sound. And that radius that Jeff designs in there uh, reduces that, pretty much eliminates it. It's a really tricky little feature that uh, a lot of people don't even know about. Looking, uh, and again, this is the extended swim step uh, on this boat, and on the top, we'll get a picture later, it's, it's beautifully teak covered, but this is a, a big, big, fun swim step. The ladder uh, that you see, you just see a bit of it sticking out there. <laughs> um, that pulls out and deploys out, and it's positioned like that, so if a swimmer <clears throat> is in the water and is uh, alone and can't get help, uh, they can they can reach that. That's actually a CE requirement that we picked up for the CE boat and then just made standard on the boat. Good stuff. A nifty feature. Those those uh, staples we call them the U-shape brackets. They they lift out and can be moved out of the way if you're fishing or want them out of the way for, for whatever reason. Right here we have the exterior openings for the stern uh, pressure. We looked at those on the inside when we were in the last wrap. That's what it looks like. And the outside. This is your folding propeller that we talked about. So it, it, when you're underway with the main engine and 99.9% of the time, the, uh, that, that stays in that position to minimize the drag. If you put it in gear and spin it, It goes out like that to uh, come in like normal propeller. Uh, further up in there, a little bit crowded here, but there's your keel cooler for the main engine. This big old monster propeller is a 44 inch propeller. Uh, three and a half one reduction ratio on the gearbox, so this ends up spinning relatively slowly. This boat typically would run probably 13, 1400 RPM, so you divide that by 3.5, that's what this is. Uh, ahead of it is the Spurs line cutter. And, you know, if there's, if there's enough light to show, we might get up on the other side, but, but notice how nicely, beautifully shaped and fair all of this is here. Uh, that Jeff does all that work to have the minimum amount of, of water disturb disturbance uh, moving towards the propeller. Uh, big old monster rudder, gorgeous big beast. This is a, people all kind of don't know what this is for here, that's a, a little panel that is removable so that if you have to pull the shaft, you, you pull the prop, of course, and you turn the rudder, you have to disconnect the rams, actually, but you turn the rudder clear sideways, and then the shaft will actually slide up through this hole. So, uh, that's what that's there for. Seldom, almost never need it, but uh, there you go. This, this rudder shoe is a monster. It's a big stainless steel assembly. It goes, it turns up in the air with a bolts and rivets and so forth. And then down at this point, uh, you can't see it very well. At this point right here, there's a break in it. Uh, so you could unbolt it and this, this back nose piece 
will drop out if you ever need to pull the pull the rudder out of the boat. So you would uh, loosen things up inside. Basically, you had to get over a pit or something. Take this off, and you can uh, drop the drop the whole thing. Down. That rub rail on there, and the upper rub rail, that isn't just some some flimsy piece of metal. That's solid, and it's actually custom made for the boat. It's not a product. Uh, they cut that out of out of uh, solid plate and uh, shape it and radius it and polish it and so forth. So uh, that in itself, I think it's probably it's like a quarter to three inch thick. Uh, just brutally, brutally strong and. Those are the port lights I was talking about that we could see from, from inside the stadium. The, uh, again, that's a three quarter inch uh, glass. They are, uh, those are, are bonded in from the outside and sealed. So we don't have any frames like we used to have. I showed you the fiberglass doors earlier and the windows now have no frames on them. For years we had aluminum frames and you had the old, you know, the old peeling paint issue. We don't have that anymore at all. Those windows are, are, are bonded in from the outside and neatly trimmed uh, with a coffee. And there's the, there's the lugs for the storm plate windows. You can see them up there if you, if anyone later decides to put those on. There's the, the end of that rub rail that transitions into that larger footprint there just to deflect if you're really scraping on a piling or just doing a nasty mistake of some kind that'll that'll deflect the, the boat away and you probably end up actually probably end up with no damage at all the piling will be able to mess but uh, not the boat there's your your forward bow thruster and uh, some people wonder what that what that deflection shield piece is on there and uh, many years ago we had had a condition where there was a in certain conditions you get a water flow through the tube when you're underway and uh, it would spin the blades and it didn't really hurt anything but you could hear it, it was kind of annoying so Jeff designed that deflection piece there to create whatever it created with low pressure behind it or deflect the water away anyway it fixed it so that, you'll see that on, on every every non-bulbous bow uh, 68, which is every 68 actually because it doesn't have a bulbous bow. That nozzle out sticking out of the of the uh, above the, the N68 there, that's the anchor wash system. There's a hydraulically operated pump uh, down in the, in the bilge area there that, that directs water up there. It's a 180 gallons a minute. It's just a, just a fire hose that comes out there. So it, it blasts your your chain if, you, if you're anchored in muddy water or, or muddy bottom and you got some kind of nasty stuff coming aboard with the chain, uh, that'll, that'll knock it off uh, nicely. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we're up on the flybridge now of the uh, 68. The uh, dash panel is, is relatively uh, simple. You've got uh, autopilot controls, engine controls, uh, a, pretty much all of your electronics condensed down to one screen uh, here. Most of what you do up here is run along on autopilot uh, or sit around and, and enjoy things. So it, it doesn't have, it's not as extensive as the, the pilot has. But a beautiful place. Um, I love this this seating area here. This is your your sundowner area with, uh, with your, your cocktails and uh, the boat anchored weather cock into the wind. And lovely view of all this around you. Place up here. That ladder is is uh, go around in the back there in a minute. But that ladder. Takes us up to the top just for servicing. You wouldn't normally go up there just for servicing all the antennas and domes and goodies uh, that are up there. You might end, you might end up with uh, with some chairs, a little table out here. Depending on which one you do. This is an interesting configuration here. I mentioned earlier about the 
offset exhaust, so the, the exhaust is comes up on here on this on the starboard side, and then we have an arch there. You usually see that arch on I've seen that before on the uh, on the engine boats, but even the single engine boat, I would use the arch for landing on your domes and so forth to run the exhaust up on uh, here on the starboard side access here. Beautiful stuff. Nicely displayed. Mm -hmm. People forget that those exhaust systems have to be engineered to grow. They grow quite, quite a bit when they get hot. So there's slip joints and soft mounts and, and so on to accommodate for that, and also to keep vibration out of the boat. out of the pilot house on the port side and we're walking forward to the Portuguese bridge. It's got your engine controls here and thruster controls. So if you're coming in to uh, typically a side tie or in a, in a tight spot and you just want to look over the side and see what you're doing, you can maneuver the boat here with the main engine and with thruster controls. And again, these are both the ports on control and they stick wherever you put them. So you can look get people clapping from the, from the dock on how good it is. This is the gasoline tank in here. And that's for, there'll be a hose system on the, on the, at the moment, that's for, for filling your dinghies. Take a look at these hinges here on the Portuguese bridge door. Big, solid chunks of stainless steel. Beautifully, beautifully engineered. Uh, these pantograph hinges. Uh, I don't know what this whole assembly weighs, but the, it's kind of like the, kind of like the lock piece in the hand lock now. But uh, it's just perfectly balanced. I can remove this lock right here, and then I'm just with, literally, you can't see it. Like with one finger, I can... I can move this this door so so easily, and it'll it'll come around and fall into place. And then uh, with, with dog down, if you were at sea or uh, whatever, normally you probably probably leave it open. But these are just really strong, really really pretty, big assembly. That, uh, again, this is I'm just moving it with, literally with one finger here. So oftentimes overlooked. I didn't want to think about what that cost, but a lovely, lovely feature in the boat. We're on the foredeck of the boat now, and that's one of the nice features of, of a NAF pilot house boat, is that you have that nice big open foredeck for carrying your, your shore boats and so forth. This will carry a 17-foot boat. We have a 2,500 pound capacity davit. It's extendable. It's re retracted right now, but it's uh, it will... Uh, extend out such you can actually launch the dinghy on either side of the boat despite the fact it's offset there or over the front of the boat if you need to. So sometimes you kind of get trapped into a slip or, or a side tie where you, you you need to reach reach both sides of the boat to, to launch the dinghy. So uh, very, very nice uh, steelhead dab but we have good luck with those. We love it. Well, Big Freeman deck hatches for, for getting into the chain storage area and and uh, any, anything else that you know, fenders or lines, whatever else you want to store in there. This this whole front little area right here is uh, isolated with this dam right here, and so you've got drains for that. So if you, if you get nastiness or dirty water or whatever it won't it won't drain back on the rest of the deck it'll drain overboard these are a, a fun feature that, that kind of kind of go unheralded uh, this is uh, 
uh, forward bilge air intake and this would have a loop and it's, it's pretty well water protected but if you're really going into battle with the boat um, you, you've got a way actually to to close that off uh, so you know if you bury the bow or whatever so if you're really doing some some heavy work um, you can go without you can go without that ventilation for a while and just and just close this off Look how nice these windows are. These are the generation, I don't know, four probably windows that North Ovens have seen over the years. They're now completely frameless and they, uh, they're, as I mentioned before, they're half inch tempered glass and they uh, they lay into a, a bed of adhesive and then there's a, a very a product, uh, I don't know the name of it, that's used to trim out uh, the edges and it's just absolutely sweet and sanitary and clean. And, the best thing is there's no frames uh, to corrode or need to be painted or, or whatever, and it's a very, very sexy. <laughs> and as always, we've got the curved windows. That's uh, that's kind of a, a Nordhaven staple, and they're they're not easy. Curved windows are a lot of work to get right, and many builders, when you, it's, in fact, I always take it as a measure to to see if a builder really is uh, committed to making something nice. If, if you if you see that they put a, a corner post here so if they can have flat windows on the side and, and the front, they, I don't know, that's like points off in my book. The, the really sanitary look uh, is, the, is the curved glass. You don't see it all. Um, uh, you know, the cockpit on the 68, lovely place to be. One of my favorite areas is this uh, seating area here. This is just, it's its under cover. Um, us old folks now are, have had our lifetime doses of sun, so it's its nice to have an extended cover that uh, keeps you sitting in the shade here. Beautiful, beautiful teak table, uh, cushions, so you can you can put a couple chairs up here if you, if you were seating, and I've seen photos of, you know, for eight or 10 people around this table, just, uh, Loving life. So this is one of my favorite, favorite areas. As with that other table, this I won't do it, but you can see the seam there. That that leaf pulls out to store, just make it easier to get in and out. You might get pulled out to, to to get somebody inside and put it back in again. So lovely, lovely area. Seating in the, in the cockpit. Set of engine controls here. So, oh, nice light just came on when I opened that. So you can, uh, from time to time, you need to back into a uh, slip. And so when you're skilled with the boat, and it doesn't take long to get skilled, using the, the pressure and these controls right here, you can uh, just back right into a slip and uh, you know, stop the boat, trust it to, to you know, the side if you need to, and, and park it. And one of the things that I like to do if you back in and maybe you're short-handed or even if you're not you can get the boat in position and then i've said it a couple times i've been saying again these thruster controls are proportional and that's a, a friction control there so friction control so you can you can set it where you want it maybe 20 percent power or so so let's say you back into a dock you haven't really tied up yet you can kind of stick the boat against the dock uh, with, with light load on it and just let it run as long as you want while you get your lines tied up and so forth. So uh, these these aft controls are very, very nice. They're also nice uh, if you are if you fish and you're backing down on a fish or controlling the boat while someone's bringing a fish in. You oftentimes see people on these, on these steering controls. You got a, a winch here. Uh, here. This is an electric winch here, so it's uh, kind of a snubber winch. You can, if you're tied up uh, to, you know, you want to get yourself tighter into a dock, you can use this snubber winch. Got barbecue here, of course. Relay. Electric. There's no gas on this boat. Can you, that's an ice maker. Yeah. So, so uh, you've got you know, the quantity, but enough. 
sink right here for washing your hands or if you're fishing or just nasty stuff if you're you know, beach combing or you've got, got sand in your hands. Mock that down if you want for get this lower if you're laying stuff on top of here. That's your, I mentioned earlier uh, about the emergency tiller. That's, uh, that plate would come out right there and that's where your chiller arm would, uh, would come up through. If you, had to, if you had a hand stir, but you lost your hydraulics uh, for some reason. Uh, very, very rare, of course, but you've got to be prepared for it. Okay, so, uh, we're deeper, deeper into the factory now, in the back, back part of the factory. And as, as we were talking about the fuel capacity of the, of the Nord 168 that we're on earlier, which is 3,100 gallons in, in three tanks, it uh, made me think that I, I wanted to talk more about the tanks and get into the different part of the factory. And as a sidebar, I want to tell you that I've, over my career, I've, I've seen uh, the most part that anybody who loves boats loves a boat factory. And there's always acting here. I love to walk around this place and see people working all the all the lamination work, the carpentry, the energy uh, in, in the factory. Off to my left, they're laminating the stern of a, of, I don't know what's called number. Uh, and so, I, I'm, unfortunately, I could not find a tank for you that was uh, open and under construction. We started building fiberglass tanks for both here at South Coast Marine in, in China about 20 years ago. The, the North Island 50 and the 57 close on its heels were the, the, the first boats to get fiberglass tanks and then it moved over to the 46 and 62 and, and everything was done thereafter. So we, we have subsequently built probably several thousand fiberglass uh, tanks and have developed the technique and they, they are just works of art to, to see, especially when they're open. I'd love to see them when they're open, but we don't have one and so we'll talk about this tank right here. Hi folks, it's Dan back here again. It's uh, it's about a week later. I'm in Dana Point now, and and first of all, I want to thank you if you're if you're still if you're still with me here. This this uh, what I thought was going to be about a 20 minute video has ended up being over an hour. So if you've uh, stuck with me through uh, th this long, I really want to want to thank you for that. I wanted to clean up a couple things. One was that I, I as I was watching it, I realized I didn't actually tell you what the engine was. And it's the, the old John Deere 6135 that we've used for, for several years now, 425 horsepower, beautiful, beautiful machine that has, uh, has served us well. Additionally, when we were near the back of the boat there over on the starboard side looking at the, the wing engine propeller and the, the keel cooler, we, we panned right over about a 12-inch plate there on the, on the bottom of the boat. It's a, that's a copper plate. And that is the lightning ground plate. So there's a heavy wire connected to that that runs up through the boat, uh, up through the arch, up to the top there, and, and connects to a, a lightning dissipator. When we were in the factory, I, I, I really wanted to show you an open tank, and we didn't, none of them were, as I, as I said in the video earlier, there were no open tanks there. But here we have now some, uh, a photo of a fuel tank. You can see it. You can see the, the baffle system that's in that's in there and uh, off to the left of that photo that's actually the, the baffle grid what it looks like before it lays into the tank so all of that is uh, is molded fiberglass final ester resin fuel resistant and that that baffle grid there lays into the tank it's all it's all glassed in and then the the lid goes over the top and it's all glassed in so it, it creates a, a gorgeous big tank impervious to, to to corrosion and as a sidebar and we've discussed it recently in some some blogs the the the, the tanks are uh, are cored for for strength but but it also insulates them so they're like a like a big a big thermos bottle in in the normal running of the boat the fuel is drawn from and returned to the the supply tank and so you don't really put hot fuel in that tank but the just atmospheric conditions as just heat that that can leak out over time the fuel could you know could get cooler or warmer and the, the tank would breathe a little bit but it's m much less likely to do it the fuel temperature in there will will stay very stable over time so the the production of of vapor and condensation and water is just 
practically zero on these tanks. And if and when you do have it, it, it drains out of the tank down into the day tank where it can be noted by an alarm or just a, a good operator will check that from time to time and, and drain it off. Well, folks, that's the end of this video. Thank you again very, very much for hanging in there with me and, and uh, walking through this beautiful boat. If you have more questions about the boat, please, please, uh, well, you, you, you can go online and, and see a lot of it on Nordhaven.com uh, or uh, call your your favorite Nordhaven salesperson or any of us here at uh, PA Nordhaven. Love to talk about this boat uh, to just to, to help your education on Nordhaven's in general or a specific interest in, in, in this particular boat. So thank you and uh, goodbye.